What if you want to make a PCB like right now and not have to wait for a PCB fab to make them and then ship them to you? Or what if you want other stuff etched into a copper layer that would be, let's say, hard to pack into the Gerber files that board houses want? Well, if you have an MSLA resin printer, honestly, you've already got a pretty much perfect tool for the job. We're gonna try a quick and dirty method today. One of the ways is, is quick and the other is uh, dirty and only one of them works. But when it does, it does work incredibly well. And I'll show you how right after a message from today's sponsor, Soriatek. Here's the thing with Soriatek. They keep sending me resin to show in these integrations. I keep using it for projects and I'm just always happy with how stuff turns out. In this video, I'll be using the Soriatek Blue resin in the clear version, which is an all-round resin specifically made for LCD resin printers. It works great for mechanical parts and detailed models alike. And pro tip, it works best when you print it over 25 degrees Celsius warm, and it gives you the best strength when you cure it in warm water as well. You can even modify its properties, for example, by mixing in uh, some of their tenacious resin for extra impact resistance. Thanks to Soriatek for sponsoring this video and check out the resins at the links in the description below. So basically the standard way of making PCBs, printed circuit boards, is by using photosensitive coated stock material like this. It's a pretty simple buildup. You've got your carrier material on the bottom. Uh, this is glass fiber or in this case paper typically. Then you've got a full sheet of copper and with the photosensitive ones you also get a thin coating that reacts to UV light. This thing also uses UV light to cure layers. See how this is coming together? The first thing we need to do is figure out how long we should be exposing the photofilm on this. What you find online is anywhere between you know a couple seconds up to 10 minutes of exposure time depending on which UV light source you use. So I laid out an exponential time scale starting with one second, two seconds, four seconds and so on up to a bit over eight minutes exponential growth, you know? So that allows me to cover a huge range of possible exposure times in just one go. The raw PCB gets taped down and then at set intervals, I can pull out this piece of paper that I covered with aluminum tape to make it completely opaque. Typically, you print your PCB layout onto a mask layer that sits between the UV light source and the coated PCB. But the M in MSLA printer already stands for mask, so here we can just use uh, the built-in LCD screen for that. I've got the PCB layout loaded up and I've set the exposure time to 10 minutes total, which should be enough to run this trial. At this point, you can't really see that anything would have changed and that's because we still need to develop the photoresist layer. So quick note on the chemicals used here. Uh, to develop the photoresist, what you use is a solution of sodium hydroxide in water, aka lye or caustic soda. This stuff is not to be messed with. Sure, it's a great cleaning product for household use, but it's also really great for cleaning the skin right off of your flesh or for cleaning out your eyesight if you get some in your eye. You've all seen Fight Club, right? That? That was sodium hydroxide. So during the process I was always wearing latex gloves, um, in this case, they're a bit more resistant than the nitrile ones uh, you'd be using for resin. I'm also wearing extra goggles and I've got a bottle of vinegar on hand if some of it does get on my skin so I can immediately neutralize it. Then to etch the copper I'm using sodium persulfate, which also isn't exactly healthy. It's a strong oxidizer so use it with caution. And you know maybe use proper lab grade containers and stuff uh, to work in and not the IKEA containers I happen to have at hand. So with that out of the way, in we go. You can immediately see that red wash that's coming off of the board. I'm helping it along a bit with a soft brush and after a couple of minutes it looks like the exposure is mostly done. You can really see where there's photoresist left and where it's been taken off. Typically you would need to do all of this in a dark room to avoid exposing the rest of the board but since I am in a dark basement room and the only light in here is artificial LED light which has no UV components I can work with it a bit more easily. Last step, in for the etching and we're done! So here is that first PCB that we made and honestly it did turn out rather nicely. So you can see that all the structures are nicely there. Uh, there's almost no sign of like pixels from the from the printer's LCD and yeah about 64 seconds so about one minute seems to be the right amount of exposure for the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro. 32 seconds seem to have a bit of trouble getting all the photoresist off and properly exposing that 
But um, if you go beyond that, we're actually getting overexposed and we're removing more of the photoresist than we have to. So 64 seconds seems to be pretty good. Now, the only problem with this is that, uh, it, I, I, I mean, you, you can see what the problem is, right? We made a negative of the actual PCB. So these are called photopositive uh, PCBs, but I guess that applies to the areas that you apply light to then actually dissolve once you put them into the development solution. So what we're going to have to do is to invert the files that we're feeding the printer and I'm going to show you how the process works right now. For this process I'm using Eagle and Fusion 360. I know I probably should be using KiCad and FreeCAD um, but this combo for me works pretty well. Basically I created my PCBs as usual in Eagle, saved them and then directly opened the Eagle files in Fusion. There you can swap over to the 3D PCB view save that as a new Fusion file, then create another empty file in Fusion, drag in the 3D PCB file, break the link, and you're good to go. There will be a couple of different copper bodies inside the part. One is traces and pads, one is fills, and one is an extra layer for just the pads. Since for these boards we need a negative model of the traces, I'm drawing a quick box around all the traces, and then I'm subtracting all the traces I want from that block. Then I can just export what's left as a mesh and import it into the slicer, in this case, sheet of box. Make sure the orientation is correct, the design needs to be flipped, and then increase the exposure time for the first layer up to the values we got from the exposure tests earlier. I'm also setting exposure times for the other layers to zero, just to be safe. Check the preview, export, and you should be ready to expose some PCBs. Of course, this process could probably be easier, but since the Mars 2 Pro that I'm using as my main experimentation platform is using the whole Shito ecosystem, you're kind of bound to their tools. Okay, rinse and repeat, and whoops, <laughs> that's, that's what happens when you add 14 grams of sodium hydroxide instead of 1.4 grams. Yeah, that's a, that's a little bit too well developed. But the PCB with 60 seconds exposure came out okay, so I did a second one with 90 seconds and that one looks pretty much perfect, to be honest. I'm really happy with how this turned out. These are perfectly usable PCBs, especially the 90 second one. Uh, it's just really crisp, the fine traces look great. For through-hole parts, the only thing you'll need to do is to drill the holes, but that's a fairly quick process on a drill press. I mean, making PCBs at home is not something you want to do in bulk, but it's more for reducing the cycle time between having an idea, making and trying a PCB, and then making the next revision on it right away. So the other thing I tried was using a blank copper clad board without the photoresist. These are FR4 boards and you can cut them by deeply scoring them with a knife and then snapping them... snapping the... I said snapping them off, now, no, okay? Well, there we go. Don't saw these when you don't have to, dust is nasty. So double-sided tape onto the bottom of the print platform, which I re-leveled of course, added some resin from today's sponsor Soriatech, I'm using the clear version of their blue resin, and then I simply cured some resin onto the copper. And surprisingly, this resin sticks really well to the bare copper. You can even make out the finer traces already after washing. The only problem with it here is that it seemed impossible to find a balance between under-curing the first layer and not having it stick well, and over curing it and covering up the channels that should remain open so that we can etch out the insulation channels between the traces. Unfortunately, even leaving the board in the etching solution overnight, uh, they only get etched around the corners and on larger gaps, but you don't see anything of the actual traces, you know? Maybe one cool application of curing resin onto a PCB is adding your own solder mask and silk screen over the finished bare traces. I was considering using Seriatek's uh, high temperature sculpt resin for that, but A, it didn't get here in time, and B, I don't know what sort of fumes that would give off when you solder against it. So one last nice cool thing that it did is to use the photoresist process for transferring an actual photo onto a PCB. You could do that with just a black and white image, but I first converted the photo to a halftone image, then created an STL with a height map from it, and used that to create a print file to expose the board. And it worked wonderfully. There's lots of detail here, and if you want, you can still hot air tin coat these for a bit more contrast. So is this a practical process to etch your own PCBs? 
I think so, absolutely, yes. It's definitely not going to replace ordering from a board house for larger orders, but when you need something right then and there, or just want to cut out a bit of time from an iterating process, the 50 minutes of your time you have to spend to get a board etched can definitely be worth it. Sure, the process of getting the files out of Eagle and through Fusion and into the printer, that could be a bit easier, and maybe there is an easier way with open source software and hardware, but in either case, the results are just really good. I hope you found these experiments helpful or at least interesting. If you did, make sure to give the video a thumbs up and maybe even subscribe for more. Also, big shout out to my patrons and YouTube members who help make this entire thing possible for me. Thank you. And thanks to everyone for watching, keep on making, and happy holidays. See you!